Welcome and welcome back. Hey, in this hey. video, hey, uh, in this video, we want to talk about the three phases to the ballistics. Well, why are we even talking about that? And what are they? Are you asking me? Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, you're the one who brought this up. So this is the part where I say things. <laughs> you say all the things right now, quick. There was an example we were going over with the, the back of a two-arm kettlebell swing. It could be in a one-arm swing, it could be in a snatch. But what was going on is at the, the back uh, of the back swing, the bell was actually flipping up. And we noticed that there were some problems with some other parts of the, that particular ballistic as well. So we started discussing, you know, why we think it's going on, what, what's, what's this doing, what's that doing. So we figured this would be a good opportunity to talk about some of the different phases of ballistics that we look at. And, you know, we've, we've, uh, have we done a video on the three zone approach? Um, we've done it on zone one, I believe. Okay. Or we haven't. I think we're saving that for a super secret course. Yeah, so you have to pay us for that. Yeah, get out your wallets. All right, so <laughs> we did do a seminar on this. And, and we talk about, we talk about- That was paid for. <laughs> Just kidding. We don't really care about money too much. Um, I am hungry though. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a kid. <laughs> we, we, uh, we, we do have a three zone approach and, and we find that it's easier with whatever we do to break things down. So with, with each ballistic, whatever it is, whether it's a vertical skill, a more horizontal skill, a hybrid, uh, you're going to have at least three big things that you're going to look for. So go ahead and, and, and pretend here. So let's say you're, you're, we're doing a swing. That'll be our example. So he's just finished his kettlebell swing. He's going to come back into what we call the loading phase. The loading phase is also going to happen with the hike from, from the first one too. Now, this has been called uh, this, this first part of power generation or force generation. Uh, I've heard it called the bounce. I've heard it called coiling. Um, we like loading. Why we like loading is because one, we're loading or stretching the tissues. As he reaches back, the hip flexes, okay? that knee flexes a little bit too. What that's gonna do is it's gonna make the stuff on the back of his legs and the front of his legs stretch a little bit. That elasticity is gonna be converted in, in what, what a lot of people know or call the stretch shorten cycle. It's gonna be a little bit, of, we'll call it free energy for his next swing. So the load phase really focuses on one, the elasticity, but two, it assumes that he's in the right position. You should probably stand up now. Um, this piece of cake. <laughs> It assumes that he's in the right position and, and that's why we like load rather than just, you know, coiling um, because it, 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 it brings up the idea of are you in the right spot in order to handle the elasticity. So the second, the second part is once he's out, uh, once he's past this phase, he's going to get a little bit of free energy that's going to kind of bounce him back. So um, he's going to come up kind of automatically probably to right about there. Um, the hamstrings are going to contract a little bit. It's going to, again, it's going to be kind of, we'll, we'll call it free energy. When he's right about here, maybe a, uh, right about there, he's going to be able to now really contract the knee and the hip. And we call this the push phase. He's pushing his feet into the floor. Now people will get into arguments uh, as a kettlebell swing or a push or a pull. One, I don't care. You guys can argue about that. I'm going to go over here and swing some kettlebells. But two, I think what's important to realize is that a push or a pull as a classification is something relative to the person. A push is relative to the planet. And from an outside perspective, when you look at the physics of the thing, it doesn't matter whether you're using muscles to push or muscles to pull, all muscles pull. It's causing a push and without that push, that kettlebell doesn't really move that high. So that's why we call it the push phase. The last phase, is once he's up here, uh, this we call this the brace phase. Brace phase. Brace phase? <laughs> <laughs> so, so at this point, all of the force that he's pushed into the floor, or not all, some of it, not all of it's gonna be conserved, but he's gonna push his force into the floor. And if he gets really rigid right up at the top, it's going to, and then he basically puts on the brakes really fast. All that energy or a lot of that energy is going to move into his arms and it's going to swing the kettlebell. So back to our original example. Once we get, once we get the, when we start looking at these three phases, we can start to think to ourselves, okay, 
what could be disrupted. Now, immediately, when you have this bell, and here, let me grab this real quick. So when you have this bell, and let's say it's down at the bottom here, rather than coming straight down or ending like this, it kind of goes like that and then flips up. And then it comes forward, you go through your swing, it comes back, and then it flips up. So that's what we're talking about. Keep your gym tidy. So the, the flip, one, is going to disrupt the loading phase. <clears throat> Likely, when that bell flips, it's probably heavy, probably moving quickly. What it's going to do is as it flips, it's probably going to pop that up a little, just a little bit. So you're, you're, you're basically breaking, breaking position. You're losing some of the elasticity. Um, you're, also, you're also not setting up in your ideal form anymore. We're assuming that the, that the ideal form is what he's going to begin with. And if that bell, rather than going back this way, Okay, rather than going straight back is going to start to come up here. He's losing some elasticity. He's no longer in the proper position. So immediately what we see is that loading phase. It's disrupted. It's not ideal. So that's our first signal. We don't, we don't want that. The second thing we want to think about is once he gets back into this load phase, he's going to get a little bit of, we'll call it, like I said, automatic energy. He's going to recoil and he's going to move. Let's say he moves this far. Um, at some point, he's going to start pushing. The knee and the hip are really going to contribute to accelerate the bell. And if you can see where his hands would be, the bell is going to be probably right underneath him or very close. This is a really good position to use the glutes and the quads together at the same time to really move that kettlebell. When you look at the studies that we do have on kettlebells, we see that the first thing that's going to happen is the hamstrings are going to contract in a, in a reflexive way. The glutes are not going to be available until later in the movement a little bit. The quads are not going to be, um, not going to be really good at working on their own. So if he's, if he's back here and one, he doesn't get as much free energy during that load phase. And then once he comes up, when he starts to move the bell, it's not going to start. Um, it's not going to start pulling the bell right away. What's going to happen is the bell has to flip back. So let me show you again. Rather than go ahead and pull that. So he's, he's the arms and I'm just going to be gravity here. Okay. <laughs> or offset gravity. So what's going to happen is he's going to pull. Now in an ideal scenario, that bell is just going to come forward, but the, the force that he's using to pull the bell has to basically write the bell. So we're, we're already wasting time. We're wasting distance. So the, the period over which he can accelerate that kettlebell is going to be diminished. If you look at the things that we need to look at to see how fast or how powerful something is, the thing we're really looking at is the impulse and the impulse is the thing that causes momentum. If the, the impulse is diminished, the object is not going to move as quickly. Impulse is the net force, so how much force he can apply with his body um, over the time he's applying it. So he's got a finite amount of space over which he can accelerate that kettlebell. If some of that space is being used to right the bell, he's diminishing his, his full potential in that push phase. So that's the second thing. Um, will it be disrupted in the, in the final phase? I don't know. I don't think we have enough information. So I don't, wanna, I don't wanna talk about that, but at least we see two out of the three phases with this, particular, with this particular pattern are going to be disrupted. So one, you're not gonna load as well. Um, you're not gonna load as well. The bell's probably gonna cause you to move up a little bit, but even, even so, you're not going to get, if we're looking, if we're looking at uh, loading these tissues, the ideal way is for him to reach back and down toward his heel right? These are the tissues we're trying to load. And if that, if that force is going up, we're not getting that ideal load. So one way or the other, that's disruptive. And then when he starts to pull the bell or by pushing his feet into the floor, what happens is he's not going to have as much time to really accelerate it. So the second phase is going to be disrupted too. So, um, that might seem complicated. Um, I don't think it is. Watch but, it again. If it is, <laughs> but, 
we, we really want to think when, when we see things, when we see any type of bell movement, when we see any disruption of the body, sometimes it's fine and it's not going to be a big deal. But we want to do a little investigating. We want to think you know, to ourselves, what could this disrupt? And when we have a basic, um, a basic system to evaluate ballistics and we say, okay, these are three phases we want to break it down in, we see that two of the three phases are um, we see that two of the three phases are disrupted. Probably not an activity that we want uh, we want to participate in. So we'll go for a quick fix. And what I might even say is with the bell, rather than you know, I see this a lot with people who get really really hingy. The bell will continue to go up and almost smack people on the butt. Um, what I would say is probably reach back toward the heel. You know, we we have cues that are pretty common for the top. So we say, let's point the bottom of the bell toward the wall in front of you. That's really common. And people will, will call it out if that bell is flipping up. Like, oh, you have too much of a vertical component or whatever you want to call it. Um, but we don't really talk much about it in the back. And it's kind of the same thing uh, where we want the bottom of the bell pointing that way, ideally at the top of the swing. And we're going to want the bottom of the bell pointing down whatever angle your your body's at. Some people are going to be a little more hingy naturally. Some people will be squattier, uh, but we don't want the top of the bell pointing up because that's going to disrupt us. So what I might do is just give someone a really simple drill, make sure they understand how to load. And I might put, you know, I might put at first, what I would probably do is just put my, one of my feet, you can put both of your feet, but then it looks kind of um, erotic and inappropriate. Oh, might be might a get, good thumbnail. Get, it might get me too. Um, so what I'm going to say is I'm just going to put my foot here and I'm really going to call attention to the heel and I'm going to make sure that he's reaching toward the heel. Um, any higher, he, he's, he, the bell's going to go the wrong way and he's already rounding through his spine a little bit. He's not respecting his natural, his natural position. So I'll, I'll just do a really simple drill like that. Give the bell, uh, give someone a target for the flat of the bell and usually stuff like that will clean up pretty quickly. Well, there you go. There you go. Seems pretty self-explanatory. Hey, and you might have a question in this one. So if you do, please put it in the comments and we'll happily answer it. If we can answer it. And if yep, we can't, we'll probably answer it. We'll answer it for do. sure. Well, I'll say something, he'll answer it. And if you like what you see, be sure to subscribe because that's what it's about. Like and subscribe, like and subscribe, like and subscribe. Hey, like and subscribe. I already did. Oh, he's done it. Hey, be like Roger. I'm going to put that on a t-shirt. And by all means, download the Bells by Iron Revival app from the Apple App Store for iOS. All right? Stay strong.